all right, all right. Let's get ready to go to the Word of the Lord. Pay attention to the announcements. God is with us. We're regrouping as a church. Ministries are starting to get reorganized, and we're fixing to make the greatest surge we've ever seen in the history of our church. This is going, we're getting ready for a 2021. 21 is the number of God. In the year preceding 21, they never blew the shofar. In the year of 21, God sounds a trumpet. 20 was a year of silence in the temple, in the shofar. 21, God speaks. This past week was Rosh Hashanah. That's the Jewish New Year. And I want to talk to you about some of that today, how it can translate to us. So many times we need to know what's going on in the Hebrew, in the Jewish nation, the nation of Israel, to see what's God doing in the church. God is doing great things. And I want to talk to you about this this morning and kind of maybe get into a little different vein than I normally speak in. But I want to challenge you today. Live in the realm of the impossible. Live in the realm of the unbelievable. And when you trust God, it's always doable. It's very exciting to live that way. We're moving into some new things. God's church is, is going to move into some new things. So don't let it scare you. Embrace the power of God and His movings. Because we're going to see good things happen. i got some good scriptures for you today. But Happy New Year. Rosh Hashanah. That sounds good, doesn't it? It's the Jewish New Year. Their year, we're in the year 2020. We're a little behind them. Their new year, the number of their year is 5781. 5781. And now our calendar changes, the Gorgian calendar. I don't know if I said that right, but uh, you that are watching online, we'll take our offering at the end of service, and you come right back about five minutes at the end, and all the baptisms will be worldwide today. And we're going to keep the camera rolling for our baptisms because we got people that live all over the place that have requested to see the end of services. So I said, we can make that happen. So our new year is January the 1st. Do y'all like New Year's? I always like New Year's. Starting over, starting a diet, and all that kind of stuff. So we start then. And it's a huge weekend to take place in celebrations over in the nation of Israel. And so if you read and you study Hebrew numbers, they always have a picture with the number. In the numbers of 5781, the number five, the picture that goes with the number five is our eye. We need new eyes in the spirit, new eyes in our physical man, new eyes in our finances, new eyes in our relationships to see what's going on around us. And we not only need new eyes, we need fresh insight to know the times and know the seasons that are taking place around us because there is a shift and we must, we must catch the shift. Now, this is what's good about God. He's very merciful and very graceful and very kind and very loving. He will give us time to catch up with the shift, okay? So we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. He's going to give us time. I, I'm glad God gives me time, Gerardo, because sometimes I'm a little slow, you know. I, I'm, I'm a little simple, and I got to catch it. So I, I got to have number five working in my life. I got to have a good set of eyes. Number seven, it was a picture of a plow. We've still got to plow. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But you've got to plow. You've got to break up ground. So you can plant a seed. And that's what you're doing. Like today, we've had bigger crowds since the pandemic. We've had little crowds since the pandemic. What are we doing? We're plowing. We're plowing. 
We're getting ready to plant seed. We, we've had some things behind the scene. Like, I'm excited, man. Last night, we had another ministry get back going again. They had fun, and they had food, and I don't plan on missing no more, okay? And because it's good food. If you're 45 and older, you need to come to this joy group. I mean, if you're hungry, they're going to feed you very, very good. And then for Thanksgiving, you sure don't want to miss because I done volunteered to fry turkeys, and I can fry turkeys real good with help sometimes. And so, but, so we're plowing. We, we had a wonderful meeting, reorganizing uh, ministries this morning. Had a powerful group of about eight men got together to reorganize some stuff that is needed. We're starting back having meetings and starting communicating, and we're plowing, we're plowing, we're plowing. Events took place here this week that were wonderful. Their family, they had uh, their mother's memorial reception after her funeral. I'm so sorry about that. And we're praying for you. And But there was people up here serving and doing the right thing and doing the kind thing. That's plowing. That's plowing. Then number eight was a picture of a fence. It was boundaries. It was separation. It separated you in. It separates you out. We have to establish our boundaries of righteousness and separation and holiness before God and right living and clean living and right living and right talking and we have to have fences up. I like that song Fred Hammond sang, Jesus be a fence all around me every day. <laughs> I better quit while I'm ahead or they'll come up here and take this microphone from me. But it talks about having a fence. We have to have barriers. We have to have blockades. Sometimes you don't need nothing but a little bit of fence. But then some people need a 12-foot fence to keep you in, okay? Now, if you need a 12-foot fence, get you a 12-foot fence to keep you hemmed up, all right? The devil may be after you. You just might be a little bit more uh, uh, seducive to, to temptation. And you, you need a big fence. And then the letter, the number one is an ox. We need oxes in the church that will work, that will carry burdens, carry loads, make ways, haul wagons, help people. Since it's pandemic, we got to have people that are kind and have insight. Mental health hotline phone calls have went up by 800%. Well, I want to tell you, if you're watching today, if you're here today, and you're depressed, and you're down, and you're having a hard time. There's hope in the house of God. There's help in the house of God. It's not sometimes something you'll just get taught, one, two, three, A, B, C, X, Y, Z. It's something you'll catch. It's something that'll get down on the inside of you, and you'll feel like Jeremiah's your twin brother, and you'll be depressed. You won't want to talk. You won't want to preach. You won't want to say anything. You won't want to sing anymore. But you'll feel like I'm kin to Jeremiah. It's like a fire shut up in my bone. Hallelujah. It's like fire. And so you can catch something here today. And you will catch on fire sometimes. Hallelujah. So allow God, allow God to pour spirit in you. It's like fire. So we need some folks that will help people that are depressed, they're sad, they're blue, they're hurt, they don't know what to do. Hey, you know what to do. Get to God. That's what to do. He'll help you any day of the week. Notice these are not just pictures. These are positions of authority that you can take. I'm in authority when I have good eyesight. I'm in authority when I'm plowing and getting ready to plant my next seed. I'm in authority when I've got my boundaries up good. I'm in authority when I'm helping somebody have carry their load. These are positions we take. I'd like you to evaluate this morning. What is your position? Are you weak? Are you tired? Are you mad? Are you sad? Are you bitter? Are you wanting to whoop everybody you see? Come on, get over that. Get a good spirit. Get a happy spirit. Get a loving spirit. We got to have that. Folks, I'm calling you. I'm commissioning you to put a smile on your face, put a pep in your step, be joyful because they are coming to this house and they're going to need your help. They're going to need your arm around them. 
So I guess we're going to have to quit some of this social distancing. I'm a hugger. I don't like all this stuff. But I'm going to behave. I'm going to wear my mask where I'm supposed to. I'm going to stay on them circles in Home Depot where I'm supposed to. I'm going to wear my mask in a restaurant. I'm going to do what they tell me to do because I'm a pretty obedient person. But, oh, Lord, I went to mail a package the other night, Friday night, I guess it was, down to the UPS. And, Gary, they told me I could bring it down there at 8 o'clock. I got down there. They said, that's just will call. Well, I had to pray to get a good spirit. <laughs> I was kind of mad, to be honest with you. But I didn't act up. I don't have to apologize to nobody. I just, you know, here I drove 30 minutes in one way, and now I got to go back Monday morning to get this package mail. And I was trying to, and it, it was just, I sent somebody a bunch of books. And so, well, I got out there, and then I got to pass it down through the stockyards. And I thought to myself, John, what happened to the pandemic? There were throngs of people up and down Main Street, up and down Exchange Street. I don't know if they was going to Billy Bob's or where they were going. I don't know what they were doing. But none of them had a mask on. All of them had cowboy boots on. The girls and the guys. The guys had the good looking jeans and the girls had the shorts with cowboy boots on. I said, isn't that a sight? Well, they were getting ready to go somewhere. And nobody had masks on. I said, the pandemic is over. Well, then I kept driving. I drove to Saginaw and up there by Polito's and all those places in the ice cream shop. The parking lot, you couldn't get another car in there. Now, I don't know if they had masks on or not, but I said, we're ready to go. We're ready to go. So I think God is getting us stirred up. He's getting us ready. And there is something special because the pandemic didn't kill us. It didn't stop us. I'm going to get me a T-shirt that says, I, I didn't survive the pandemic. I thrived the pandemic. Hallelujah. I thrived in it. Amen. You know, we done good as a church. We just kept on going. I told my wife, I'm going to buy you a white helmet because you're trying to start so many construction projects around here and you're trying to act like a, a project manager up in this place. You got stuff going, three different projects. She said, Brother Jim, you got three different groups to manage this week. I said, oh, man, do you ever check the cost on this stuff? <laughs> well, what? She's plowing. But you know what? God's getting us ready. We're going to have you a drive through over here, ladies. You won't lose your wig, your eyelashes, your nails won't melt. And the men. Starch won't be out of her shirts. Her shoes won't be unshined. We're going to have a drive through You can come in this door. We're going to have your valet parking. We're doing all that during the pandemic. We're adding on storage. We're doing all kinds of stuff. We're dreaming. We're believing. We're having fun. It's a little different. It's in faith. I wonder how it's going to happen sometimes. But we keep plowing. We keep moving. We keep living the things out we're supposed to. So I want to encourage today. Snap out of it. Have a plot change. Have a plot spoiler. You may have been diagnosed and supposed to die last year. You may have been supposed to have been divorced last year. You may have supposed to be sick this month. But let's have a plot spoiler today. Let's change the narrative. Let's get God on our side. Hallelujah. We can do it. It's not over. We're just getting started. And what a start. Amen. What a start. You ain't seen nothing yet. You better get ready. You better get ready. It might get wild around here. I'm feeling good in my soul. I'm not going to retire young. I'm 62. I'm not drawing Social Security for a long time. You know what my wife did when I turned 62? I got it in there on my desk. She come bringing me a paper, and you need to check how many quarters you got paid up. She insinuating I'm fixing to start drawing Social Security. I ain't drawing. I'm not retired. I'm young. I'm still young. Come on, say amen to that, Tammy. Come on, somebody say amen. What they say, you're only as old as you feel? We're young around here. We're the joy group. Hallelujah. Hey, we done been through our depression. We done been through our sickness. We done been through our the, the doctor scared. We done been through our marriage ordeals. So we got joy. We know God can get you from point A to point B to point C, and you're going to be all right. 
Most of your problems, you need to have them young so you can enjoy the rest of your life. Amen? Amen. Doc, I don't know what's wrong with me. I've been walking and exercising, and I'm gaining weight. <laughs> the joy groups gains weight. I'm just going to tell you that right now. They gain. But I'm going to have a plot twister. Hallelujah. I'm going to have a plot twister. How many going to do better the rest of this year? Now, how many felt like that you were really, really going to get all this stuff in 2020 and just double up and all this? We did, didn't we? I see double. Well, you know what? I'm still seeing double. I'm still seeing blessings because I feel like this. 2020 is a year of silence and all this kind of stuff. You can put anything on that you want to. But then 2021, 21. You ain't got to go hard to figure out that's the number of God. And we're going to see some things happen. And it, it doesn't matter what happens in the election. It don't matter who the new Supreme Court judge is. It don't matter what, if you're a Democrat, if you're a Republican, if you're a Green Party, if you're a Tea Party, if you're independent, if, if you just know uh, nothing. It don't matter about all that. Let me tell you, the influence and the voice that you're going to hear about in the highways and the byways is going to be what God is doing in his church. That's what we need to look for, and that's what's going to be the excitement. That's going what's going to be the news at the top of the hour is what God does. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Hallelujah. And I ain't talking about Monday night football. I'm talking about Sunday morning church where God is. Praise God. Are you ready? Are you ready for some church? Are you ready for some church? Well, if I had a Hammond B3 organ behind me now, I feel like preaching this morning. I'm telling you, we are living in a day that we've never seen signs and wonders like we're going to never see them before. I, I want you to find somebody that's got somebody shut in, locked down, locked up. They've forgotten about. Bring them to church. Bring them on the stretcher. Bring them on their wheelchair. Bring them any way you can come because God can touch anybody. Amen. Your eye be watchful. Jesus told us in Matthew 26, verse 41, watch and pray. It didn't say watch and play. It said watch and pray. That ye enter not, oh God, into temptation. You better figure out what gets your attention and what tries to tempt you and what tries to make you be good at 10 on Sundays, but bad at 7 on Saturday. And stay away from the bad at 7 on Saturday and work toward getting to the good on Sunday. Because somebody, Don't enter into temptation. It'll jack you up. It'll mess you up. Now, I'm not tempted in this area, but I would be in trouble on many, many levels. If I was tempted to have a woman on the side, she did everything to say amen, didn't she? She said, I'll whoop that girl. <laughs> she had to have her on her side. <laughs> whoop me. <laughs> it even gets worse, okay? She's younger than I am. I don't know if I can still outrun her. If you know you got a weakness, stay away from it. And when you first start coming to serve Jesus, it is not your responsibility to go out and hit all the bad places, the ugly places you used to be, and to save those people. You got to be a disciple first. You got to get rooted and grounded. And, and because you'll go back out there and, and you'll have a good heart and you might be witnessing, and, and all of a sudden they go start rolling a joint and you got the joint in your hand. That's how it works. You, you, you're not strong enough because you got a weakness in that area. Watch and pray, you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. How's your flesh today? I got to strengthen mine a little bit. I got up this morning looking at them scales. I said, my God, Brent, I'm so mad at you. I'm not eating no carbs. I'm not eating no sugars. Sister Millie. <laughs> oh, they make sure you got it. They make sure you got it. I mean, if you go to their house, I'm going to just tell you, if you're on a diet, don't even go to their house. It's over. It's over. It's beyond temptation. It's heaven. 
okay? <laughs> and heavenly, what they cook and put on the table. All right, anyway, the flesh is weak. Have you ever had a weak flesh? Make a mistake and don't mean to? Well, if your flesh is weak and you make a mistake, what do you do? Quit church? No. You ask God to help you. Repent right there. Put it behind you the best you can and keep going. Let me tell you how to be faithful. Never miss two church services in a row. That's how you be faithful. That's how you be faithful. Is this good preaching today? Good. It's pastoral, isn't it? <laughs> it's pastoral. Okay. Now, so are you watching? Let's watch. Okay. Get, let me keep going here. Plow, plow, plow. Isn't this great? And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Okay, I can't quit right now. If I was to quit and go to acting up, go to gambling and cheating, shooting, fighting, I couldn't come back in here on a Sunday. I would have disqualified what I'm doing. I wouldn't be fit to be a pastor. I got, I got to stay fit to be a pastor. Now, I could be saved, but I might not be able to do what I'm doing right now. So I don't want to become unfit. I don't want to mess this good deal I've got up. And number one, I love the Lord and I want to have good integrity. And so a lot of people say, well, I just don't want to see what's going on. You've got to see what's going on. But you've got to be careful. We're living in a little bit of chaos right now. And I know a lot of people like to follow politics and all this kind of stuff. And we got Supreme Court hearings and it's fixing to be a fight in America. No matter which side of the aisle you're on, it's going to get nasty. And you, you may be champion one banner and then champion another banner. But let me say this. You better not let that nasty, bitter, hatred spirit get in your spirit. You better not. You, you, you can be on any side you want to. But you better not let that nasty stuff get inside you because it'll make you want to fight. Amen. So, you may say, I don't want to do that. I'm tired of plowing. It's hard to separate. Well, could it be that God is doing his church right now like he did Gideon? Gideon, you got too many. Send some of them home. They, they ain't going to help you. Gideon, I said you got too many. Send some of them home now. He sent another group home. Gideon, what, I, what did I tell you? You still got too many. He sent another group home. They finally got down to 300. Could it be what we're seeing at the end of this pandemic? That God has separated some things out of his church. And he's got us down to a little smaller size. So we can say, I got to prune you a little bit. I've got to train you a little bit. I need you to be like Gideon's army a little bit because I'm fixing to work through you. You're going to have great victories. You're going to have great, great things happen for you. But I'm going to show you I'm in charge this round. Maybe God is separating us. I don't really talk about that. But shall we stand? I don't know a lot about prophecy. I don't really read after prophecy teachers or preachers. I've got some information I may share the next couple of weeks. But this is what I do know. It's what our DNA is. What Christianity's DNA is. We all go back here. When Jesus had them all gathered out there on the mountainside right before he was gathered up to heaven, he told them to go and tarry until the comforter came. After the Holy Spirit came in the book of Acts in the upper room, you don't find tarrying any no more in the scripture. It was poured out. It was poured out. I started to do an illustration, but I can explain the illustration. If I had a gallon, a five-gallon bucket, and I had Paul, Paul would have done it, and I had Paul, and it was full of water, and I just started pouring water on his head. And he just started splashing on his back, on his shoulders, down his arms, soaking his clothes, on his feet. 
down his pants, all around him. That's what a five-gallon bucket would do. Now, he wouldn't let me do that. He just poured it out, poured it out, poured it out. That's what the Lord wants to do. So in the last days, let me read you this scripture. I, I, I'm not a student of that because I'm a faith preacher. I believe in preaching on miracles and signs and wonders and, and those things. That's, that's an encouragement and God blessing and prospering you. That's the vein that I, I stay in and seeing people saved. But this is what I know. This is what's in our DNA. Sometimes when you try to get away from your DNA, it'll mess you up. You've heard that story about the chicken and the eagle. eagle. There's a chicken yard and somehow an eagle nest got, an eagle egg got up in that chicken yard. And that egg hatched and that little baby eagle was born. But that eagle was an eagle, but it was raised with chickens. Different color. It started getting big. But it, it, was a, it felt like it was a chicken. That's all it knew was chickens. Roosters. And that cackling and carrying on. Well, one day another eagle seen this eagle in there and swooped down and said, what are you doing in the chicken yard? He said, I'm a chicken. You ain't a chicken. Look at how you look. He said, no, sir, I'm a chicken. He said, no, you're not. You're an eagle. You're just like me. You can fly. You can get out of this place. You don't have to live like a chicken no more. You don't have to live like this. That eagle said, no, you're wrong. I'm a chicken. I was born here. I'm a chicken. He said, flap your wings. You'll fly out of this place. Well, he did. He flopped, flew a little bit, and then he flopped. He hit the fence and fell back down. See, I told you I was a chicken. Well, they talked again. This went on two or three times. Flop, flop. But one time, that old eagle spread out one more good time. Flapped those wings. Air got under those wings. And that eagle flew above that fence and looked back at those chickens, looked over at his eagle friend, said, you're right, I'm an eagle. You may feel like a chicken, but we got DNA. We got God's DNA in us. This is what's going to happen in the last days. I, I can't tell you about all the trumpets. I can't tell you about all, all, a lot of that other stuff. But I do know this is what I expect. He put this in here for guys like me. That's kind of simple. For these are not drunken. I'm not going to take a survey. As ye suppose. See, it was early. They hadn't had time to get drunk yet. Seeing it's but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out. I will pour out. When did he say he would do it? In the last days. That's what I'm looking for. I'll be honest with you, I'm not looking for it. may happen, but I'm not looking for the hailstones. I'm not looking for the tribulation and all that stuff. I, I want this. Pass in the last days, I pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That's ministry. That's the blessings of God. Your kids are going to be all right. And they're going to sit beside you in church. They might be missing today, but they're going to sit beside you in church. We're fixing to see part of our growth will be a family growth. Because it's nothing, no more fun. Coming to be with your family and then slipping out to eat after church on Sunday. Making it a family day. That's living. That's living. Let me keep reading. Your young man shall see visions. We got to give them space. Don't think they're crazy. Your old man shall dream dreams. Don't y'all say nothing. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I'll pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I'll show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. 
Hold on now. Have y'all heard about any shedding of blood lately? They fighting everywhere in some of these cities. Y'all heard about fires? Smoke? I called my friend yesterday out in California. He said, Brent, we can't hardly even go outside. We can't even have our, our deal. They have a church in their house. He retired and started two more churches. 70 years old. Just, just full of energy. He said, we can't even go outside. I talked to my baby sister in Lodi, California. She said, Brent, they have a business. They serve food there. And they eat outside. It's beautiful. She said, we can't eat outside. She said, I just got everybody. We, we forgot about social distancing. I just got everybody packed inside. And we're loving it. She said, but I have to go out there several times a day. We have to wash our hair, wash our clothes. Ashes are falling. Smoke is in the air. The sky is orange. And we just got to wash everything off all the time. She said, I've never seen nothing like it. So blood and fire, vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness. The moon into blood. Before that great and notable day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Listen, we, we got to tell people, no matter how bad it was, you can be saved. No matter how much blood, no matter how much smoke, no matter how bad the sky is, you can still be saved. In other words, how bad you've been, how ignorant you've been, how crazy you've been, how mean you've been, how sorry you've been. You can still be saved. And all those minuses in your life will have a mark grown through them, and it'll be a plus. It looks like a cross. Jesus will save you today. I want somebody to give their heart to God today. That's what we're about. I mean, hey, we're going to have miracles from now on. I love miracles. But the greatest, you go to heaven with half a leg. You can't go to heaven with a half unsaved heart. And let me tell you something, we got to get back to believing heaven and hell is real. We live in a cute religious day. God's going to bless us. God's going to prosper us. He's going to help us. That's a given. That's your covenant right. Understand that. Live on that. But we got to be soul winners again. you got to witness this week. Bring people to church. It's about time to start, okay? Come to pass. Everybody say, come to pass. Shall call on the name of the Lord and shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by in the midst of you. As ye yourselves also know. I don't know how to explain revelations to you. It's not my goal. Even Daniel, after the sixth chapter of Daniel, an interpreter of dreams, had to have Angel Gabriel had to come tell him what these dreams meant. So I'm really not in that bad a company if I don't understand something that deep of God. But I do understand a sinner giving his heart to the Lord. As ye yourselves also know, we need to know we can do this. So my challenge to us, let's continue to do what we know. Be ye filled with the Spirit. May God's Spirit just begin to fall in this place. May God's Spirit be poured out on us in this place. His Spirit will change you. God wants to save.